Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Today's video will be the first part of two videos. Uh, in this first part, we'll be talking about how to run a hierarchical regression. And in the next video, what we'll be talking about is how to write up and interpret, as well as how to make tables for our hierarchical regression analysis. So in today's video, we'll be going over how to compute descriptive statistics and a correlation matrix for our data set. So these are just good practices uh, in order to inspect the data before running the actual hierarchical regression. And then we'll go into the hierarchical regression. And what we'll be doing is we'll be estimating three regression models in sequence. And for each regression model, we'll be adding a set of predictors. And our biggest question is how does each set of predictors contribute to the prediction of Y? And so in order to formally test this, we'll be looking at the R squared change. And this is an F test that tests whether the additional sets of predictors offer a significant amount of prediction for our criterion, which in this case is Y. So again, today we'll be going over how to estimate the hierarchical regression. And then in the next video, we'll be going up how to write, we'll be going over how to write up the hierarchical regression, as well as how to create some tables to organize the information from our analysis in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this video, we'll be working in R, and so I have RStudio opened up already. And I also have a template open. So I've uploaded this online, so you're free to download it and use it if you'd like. Um, again, this is just uh, to organize uh, the syntax that we're about to write out using um, a series of comments here. And so the file is called week5 underscore template R. Okay. So let's get into the actual lab. And so where we'll start is reading in our data. So today we'll be working with the reg data to data set. And so where I, where I placed it on my computer is in the C drive in the data sets folder and the file name is reg data dot So it's a tab delimited file. Um, the header is true because my first row um, of input our variable names and then the separator everything is separated by a tab so remember to denote um, a tab delimited file we simply say that the separator is uh, forward slash or backward slash t and that's wrapped in quotes okay and we're using the read dot table function here and we are calling our object reg data two. Go ahead and run this. That'll give us our reg data two data set. So we have 150 variables, sorry, 150 observations for six variables, y, and then x1 through x5. Okay. So before getting into our hierarchical regression, we're gonna start with um, some descriptive statistics just to get an idea of what we're working with. So I'm going to load the psych package and then I'm going to use the describe function uh, for my data set, reg data2. So I'll go ahead and run, uh, load the package, run describe, and then here we get our descriptive statistics in our console. So 150 is the sample size across all the variables. Uh, y has a mean of about 50 with a standard deviation of about 10. X1 has a mean of 10 with a standard deviation of about 3. Um, X2 has a mean of 10 with a standard deviation of about 3. X3 has a mean of about 4.75 with a standard deviation of about 2. X4 is pretty close to that and so is X5. Okay, so those are the means and standard deviations of our variables, and then we also have these other descriptives. Uh, the median, the trimmed mean, the mean absolute deviation, the minimum maximum range, skew and kurtosis, um, just in case you want to take a look at those. Okay, um, and then now we'll estimate a correlation matrix for our data set to get an idea of what the relationships are like between the variables. Um, so we'll use the core function, uh, and then inside of that goes our reg data to object. Go ahead and run that, and here we have our correlation matrix. 
So between x1 and y, we see is 0.24. And then all the other variables with y seem to have pretty moderate to strong correlations. Um, and then, so we see here on the first row, you can see each variable and how it's related to y, which is our outcome. Um, so this row is pretty important. And then if you want to look at any of the other uh, correlations between the variables, like we can see here, x2 and x1 seem to be, um, seem to be pretty uncorrelated. And that goes for x2 and x3 as well, because 0 0.08 is a pretty small correlation. Um, even smaller, x4 and x3. OK. So we've scanned our descriptives. We've scanned our correlation matrix. Now we'll get into, the, into actually running the hierarchical regression. So I'm going to create this object called mod1. This will be our first model. And I'm going to use the LM function to estimate our first regression equation. And so the way that this works is we're going to be entering in different sets of predictors. Um, using different models, and then we're going to be comparing the models across uh, the different sets. So for this first set, I want to estimate a model where y is predicted by x1 and x2. And my data set is red data2. And then after I estimate the model, I'd like to request a summary of model 1 to get my parameter estimates and also the f-test for the model. So again, just to reiterate, our first set of predictors, we're looking at x1 and x2. Go ahead and run that. Request the summary. And then where we want to focus here is uh, the parameter estimates for the slopes. So we want to know what the slope is for x1 and the slope is for x2. And so we see here x1 is statistically significant because it's less than 0.05, and so is x2. Also statistically significant because it's less than uh, 0.05. And in terms of the model as a whole, on 2 and 147 degrees of freedom, the f statistic is 11.84. And remember, this is scientific notation, so e to the negative 5 means that you want to move this decimal place um, five spaces to the left. So this would be a very, very small number. And so um, the F statistic is also significant. So our model offers a, our model as a whole contributes a significant uh, amount of prediction of the criterion Y. And then um, the interpretations for the slopes would be the same. So for every holding, uh, so for x1 here, the interpretation would be holding x2 constant, uh, y is expected to change 0.71 units for every in unit increase in x1. And similarly, for x2, holding x1 constant, y is expected to increase 0.89 for every unit increase of x2. So those interpretations stay the same. OK. So we have our initial model uh, estimated. And now we want to, the next thing we want to do is estimate our, our second model, which I'll call mod 2. And here we'll be adding our next set of predictors. So in addition to x1 and x2, I'd like to add x3 and x4. Data set again is reg data two. And then another summary of the model. Okay, so as you can see from this model, model one, we have x1 and x2. And then here we're adding, in addition to x1 and x2, we're adding x3 and x4. So I'll go ahead and estimate this regression, request the summary. Okay. So now we have our parameter estimates for our predictors here. And so x1, again, it's significant because p is less than 
x2. Again, this is e to the negative 05, or e to the negative 5, so this is a small number. That's also significant. Also significant for x3, and, and again for x4, uh, statistically significant. So all four of our predictors are statistically significant, and the model as a whole on 4 and 145 degrees of freedom uh, the F statistic is 21.97, and the p-value is even smaller than the last model. So this also is less than 0.05, and so our model is statistically, or our F statistic is statistically significant. So we reject the null and say that our model as a whole is, is providing significant prediction of Y. Okay, so how do we formally test the models? So to do that in R, we use the ANOVA function, and we compare mod 1 to mod 2. And so what this will test for is the R squared change between mod 1 and mod 2. So how does R squared change? And is the change significant? And using the F test, um, this test will indicate that. So we'll go ahead and run this. And so you can see here, our model 1 is Y predicted by only x1 and x2, and then for model 2, we add on x3 and x4. So the question that we're interested in here is, do x3 and x4 as a set offer significant prediction over and above x1 and x2 alone? So on 2, so the things you want to focus on here is on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom, the R squared change is statistically significant. Now this is a very small number, remember, you'll be moving the decimal place here to the left 11 times. So that's a very, very small number, and the F is pretty large, it's 27.779. So the R squared change is statistically significant from model one to model two, which means that X3 and X4 account for a significant amount of prediction or account for a significant amount of variance in Y over and above X1 and X2. Um, just be careful when you're interpreting this stuff. Um, you want to make sure you're speaking in terms of sets of predictors and not individual predictors. So while our summary here gives us information about the individual predictors in the model, this, uh, this R squared change F test gives us the interpretation for this is the contribution of x3 and x4 over and above x1 and x2. So set, so set 2 over and above set 1. Okay. Moving on, uh, we're going to estimate our last regression model here, mod 3. And do that using the lm function again. And so all of the predictors that we've been using so far, so x1, x2, x3, and x4. And for this model, we'll be adding one more predictor, our last one, so x5. And data equals reg data2. Request a summary for this model. Go ahead and estimate the model and then request the summary. So here, all of our predictors, again, are significant. So less than 0.05, less than 0.05, less than 0.05, less than 0.05, and less than 0.05. And then as the, the model as a whole on 5 and 144 degrees of freedom, another large F statistic which is, and the p-value is extremely small, so this is much less than 0.05, so this is statistically significant as well. So the model as a whole contributes a significant amount of prediction for the criterion y. And then to test this against our model 2, we use the ANOVA function again. And this time we're comparing model 2 to model 3, run this, and on 1 
and 144 degrees of freedom. The F statistic is 11.25 and our P value is less than 0.05 so the R squared change is significant. So again Here's model one, which is x1 through x4, predicting y. And then here's model two, where we add x5. And so this test lets us know that the addition of x5, um, or that x5 contributes a significant amount of prediction of y over and above x1 through x4. So in this case, our set of predictors is only one. So that's. Um, so we'll be talking about the, the gain in prediction uh, in terms of only one predictor. So from model one to model two, we added two predictors, x3 and x4. And then from model two to model three, we added one predictor, which is x5. And so x5 here, according to this F test, contributes a significant amount of prediction over x1 through x4. Okay, so that's estimating the hierarchical regression. Uh, we did, we estimated three models and then compared one to two and then two to three. Um, that will be it for this video uh, where we just go over how to actually estimate the model and how to get the output that we'll need. Um, in the next video, which is paired with this one, we'll go over how to write up uh, the results here, uh, how to interpret the output, and also how to create some tables to organize all of this information. So again, uh, this video was only to go over estimating the different models and then comparing the models uh, using the R-squared change, or looking at the R-squared change uh, using an F-test. And then in the next video, we'll be going over how to write it all up uh, and how to organize the information into tables. All right, and with that, that concludes this video on running hierarchical regression in R.